on 2SM and the Super Network. High Tide. Thanks to Shimano. Tomorrow's tackle today. If only I could go fishing down the river again. Up before the sun with a can of worms running with my friend. Scurrying down the riverbank, taking our positions on the bridge. Hoping for that red fin, one pound to put in Mama's fridge. Where the wobbler and the dragonfly knew us like they knew the river bend. But as sure as yabbies bite your toes. This boyhood story had to end. Six after four. Good morning. Happy Saturday, everybody. And Dave Sutherland to answer your question. Hello and welcome to Tackle Box Cleaning Day today. The forecast is this way. 19 degrees in Sydney, heading for a top of 22 in Brisbane. The general forecast is for Westley, 15 to 20 knots, decreasing to 10 knots in the late evening. Uh, seas below 0.5 of a metre and sunny conditions. That's what they are saying here. But for those that uh, are thinking of going out and having a bit of a play, a, a trough associated with the cold front are uh, across New South Wales at the moment, driving vigorous westerly to southwesterly winds across the state. Uh, behind that's a high pressure system, which is going to move uh, from the west and become a dominant feature, bringing lighter winds Monday, Tuesday. But there is another change expected to come our way around about uh, Wednesday. So keep an eye out for that. Now, if you're thinking of heading offshore, you might want to think again. <laughs> we are looking at westerly to southwesterly, 15 to 25 knots, reaching up to 30 knots in the early morning. Seas 2 to 2.5 metres, decreasing to 1 to 1.5 around about midday. The swell will be southerly, 2 to 2, 4 metres, decreasing to 1 to 1. Point, uh, 1.5 to 2.5 during the afternoon. Uh, large and powerful surf conditions in the morning are expected. Hazardous coastal conditions are uh, expected and also there are marine warnings out. A gale warning for the Eden Coast, strong wind warning for Coffs Harbour, Macquarie, Hunter, Sydney, Illawarra and Batesman's Coasts and uh, there was a strong wind warning for Byron which has now been cancelled. Kieran Riki, looks like we're playing in the estuaries today. I would think so, yeah, in the bays, up, the, up some of the... Uh the creeks and things like that. Look for the various places on the dams where you've got a bit of protection. That's if you need to fish. Yeah. The enclosed water report too. Westerly to south, westerly 15 to 25 knots up to 32.5 uh, is the uh, is the expected uh, swell size there. Now, <clears throat> just on that, Kieran, uh, yesterday... yesterday Having a look at the observations for the last 72 hours from the BOM, it got up to nearly 20 knots at Terry Hills. Now, <laughs> if that was 20, I don't know. I don't know if the uh, wind was avoiding the BOM's reading machinery, but I had it uh, at around about 30 to 35 knots in the gust up where I was. That's and that I don't have any wind instruments. That was just my guess based on you know, years of watching the wind. And I thought, I'm not going to say anything about this. I'm not going to say a single word about this because, you know, the the Bureau said it was only, you know, 23 to 25 knots gusts. But um, I hear never been bait and tackle. Mark, was, was it Mark Jr. or Senior? No, sir, Mark Senior. I spoke to him yesterday afternoon and I said, how's it? He said, oh, Kieran, do you really want to know? I've had two customers all day. So this is after lunch, probably around two two thirty, and he said, "Mate, the wind's been howling here at about seventy k." So I'm happy. So I'm happy that I was. I, I got it mind. right. Yeah. It. It. So do take that into account um, if you're thinking of heading out. Now, the, the sad news is, yep. um, there has been some really good catches of yellowfin. Uh, right out there at the, just at the, the drop off of the shelf during the week when people could get out, but. It's going to be a long, horrible, ugly ride home if you try and attempt that today. Well, the most important thing is what sort of boat am I going to take out there? And am I capable of handling those conditions? Good point. Good point. Really good point. You know, you know you've, got to, you've got to use common sense. And anything, 
I always relate a lot of this back to flying, right? And when you when you first learn to fly, you take baby steps. You yeah. go up well, in the I plane. Imagine your arms get tired. <laughs> you go up in the plane, and they first of all see if you're going to be sick. <laughs> if you're not going to be sick, then the first thing you do is learn how to fly straight and level. The second thing you do is to learn how to bank. The th- third thing you do is to learn how to climb and descend. And so on and so on and so on and so on until you get to I can fly a 747 anywhere in the world. All the way up that scale. Take it in baby steps. If you haven't been out in bigger than 15 knots before, go out in 20 knots. And, you know, obviously take swell height into account too, what swell height you've been at, and step up to it. Don't just go, okay, last time I went out with seven knots and 0.5 of a metre swell, it's blowing 35 today with four metres, I'll give it a go. Because that's not going to end well. And Marine Rescue have been incredibly busy again this week. Yes, yes. Which is We're going to talk to somebody from Marine Rescue, Mike Hammond, I think. Yep, Mike Hammond, uh, just after 5.30, around about 5.30 uh, today, we're going to have a a chat with him. Mm. Uh, We're going to talk to PJ today. Sorry? Will we catch up with PJ this morning? Yeah, PJ, we're going to be ringing uh, this morning. Um, Mm -hmm. He's going to try and find out. A little truck stop to pull into and have a chat. He did get out. I spoke to him yesterday. He did get out and uh, caught a few. Well, <laughs> let's. Just, uh, I, I should just record that and push that. Put that on a uh, a push button, shouldn't I? PJ got out during the week and caught fish. There you go. <laughs> That's the grab. Most unusual. <laughs> Most unusual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyhow, take that on board about what the bomb says. I don't think you're allowed to call them the bomb. They've got to be the Bureau of Meteorology. But, uh, yep, yeah, the conditions for rock fishing and crossing the bars will be dangerous. So if you haven't done it before oh, or yeah. you're not sure about it, don't go. I... Uh, and if you want to learn, go with a charter boat operator. Mm. <clears throat> Funny you mention that. Funny you you know that I'm working on a project at the moment that's that's going to see a, a relocation of a sailboat um, from Port Hacking to Pittwater, and to do that, I've been talking to various yacht masters about uh, coming on board because it's outside my level of expertise. Yeah. You know, I, mm-hmm. I I think it's smarter to err on the side of caution. They call it risk mitigation. Very good, good terminology. Risk mitigation. Yep. Parramatta did it last night. Did they? Yeah, they had a risk <laughs> mitigation. They got, they got beat. They, refu- they, they refused to the catch rest the pack them. They refused to catch the ball in case they got tackled. Therefore, yeah, they. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. But I tell you this I watched uh, the footy with uh, Brendan and. Boy, oh boy. Um. The, the referees, they're an utter disgrace. And they think, if they think they're going to take the game that was the type of football and the refereeing and the and the linesmen or lines people to America, and if you think the Yanks are going to cop that serve, but you know, well, the but, Yanks. And I don't know how the tab and the other betting uh, shops. It's, we'll we'll carry on because people, if you bet on football, you are a fool. Go and throw your money down the drain <laughs> because, you know, last night it was very obvious one team had 14 players and the other one only had 13. And I don't, you've got to work out how to come, who the extra player was on one side. <laughs> I mean, it but the Americans, disgusting. the Americans would laugh but at America, us but, because in NFL... In their National Football League, yeah. they have video. They have video referees deciding everything. That's exactly right. right. They because they've got not. television, right? Yeah. They can do it. We've got television, but we just don't do it. I remember having a debate. I remember having a debate with a, a brother-in-law about um, video refereeing, and I said, "Well, at least for tries, they should bring in video referee." Oh, that's ridiculous! It'll slow the game down so much; it'll make it boring. I said, mate, you watch Test Cricket, it goes for five days. What do you want about boring? Let me say this. <laughs> Just answer this for me, Greg. <laughs> Grant, my yeah. boy. Anywhere from try line to try line internally, yeah. if you throw the ball forward, it's called back or it's a penalty. Yep. But if I throw the ball forward to you and you score, 
can't rule on that. The most important part on the field is the try line. Yeah. And no, there is no. Sorry, can't rule on that. That there, there within lies a story. Why? Why is it we won't allow a ruling on a decision? We should have a chat to the Talking Sport crew and find out and see if we can get an answer for that, because that is an interesting... Yeah, Graham Hughes. Tw- no, yeah. Well, well Hughes talk he... to Graham's wife. She's a good fisherman. Is she? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Hughes is a good man. He's been around the game for a long, long time. I remember when he first started here at uh, 2SM way back in the I, day. I can tell you a long time back, because I remember back in the KB days, yeah. right? And uh, there would have been no Ray Warren. Rabs would have still been calling the dogs around the country. <laughs> He'd never have got the job if it had been, hadn't been for Kerry Buckridge, all right, turning up inebriated one day, <laughs> and even that perhaps was the only person available <laughs> that was a, actually caller and uh, fell into the job. But Graham Hughes was was the voice of television on footy, and, and he plays. He had played the game. I remember Rab, chatting. Rabs couldn't play touch football. I remember chatting with Bucko once because I panelled for him for for quite some time. I'm sure he wouldn't mind me, <laughs> me passing this on. But uh, I was. I don't talk- think he's with us any no, longer. No, no. But you still, you know, he was watching over. So you know, I said uh, I said to him, "What was it like doing the the custom? Remember the custom credit uh, tennis tournaments I on do. a Friday night? What was it like doing that with uh, John Newcomb?" He said, "What a ridiculous scenario! What an absolutely ridiculous scenario that was. They put a co-commentator." in the broadcast box with me, who was sponsored by an alcohol-producing company. How stupid a plan was that? (laughs) Legendary man. We're going to take a break and come back in just a moment. Talking Sport, weekdays from three. Yeah, g'day, Graham. You know me? I'm the wrestling fan, Rodeo fan, Graham. You know me? Uh, I think so, yes. My mate and I were given Gorilla Monsoon plenty. We were calling him every name in the um, (laughs) thumb, and Texas thrown him over the top rope and he's landed at my feet. And he stood up with a head bigger than a watermelon oh, and he's yeah. screaming at me six inches from my face, spraying me with spit and sweat. <laughs> I lost five pounds that night all the time. Weekdays from three. My brothers and I used to sit there and go, oh, there goes the table again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon Bellamy goes back through those old tapes and has a look at them for some tactics on the weekend? <laughs> Great question, <laughs> B-Man. If anyone, what? if anybody ever <laughs> criticises us because there's something we don't talk about, <laughs> I'm just going to get give him Tony's number. Uh, Bulldog Craig says the caller Tony is living his best life today. He's all this. having the best day. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think you made his day. This is 2SM. A practical, inexpensive Father's Day gift idea is stiff, sore and sorry pain relief gel. If you, dad or someone you know suffers from arthritis or aches and pains, Stiff, sore and sorry is the present that keeps on giving. Always read the label and use only as directed. If symptoms persist, see your healthcare professional. To find the location of your nearest stiff, sore and sorry stockists, call Ray on 040 66 71 359. 040-66-71-359. You'll see more of Australia in less time when you travel by plane with Outback by Air. In a fraction of the time it would take you by road, Outback by Air will fly you to destinations you'll never forget and you'll probably never see again. What you will cover in a week on Outback by Air, all-inclusive tour, would take you up to a month or more to do in a motor car. Check the packages and destinations available at outbackbyair.com.au or you can phone 1300 310 503. There's more to driving on the road than you think. So when it comes to tyres, you need something that's going to deliver performance when you want it and safety when you need it. Maxxis tyres deliver great value without compromising on safety. Get award-winning Maxxis tyres with the latest technology built in for you, your family and your car. Maxxis tyres. Find out more at maxxistires.com.au. That's M-A-X-X-I-S. 
maxistires.com.au. If you need help with repairs or maintenance to your strata unit or your commercial building, Network Construction Services could save you a hell of a lot of time and, believe me, a lot of money as well. You might want assistance with things like waterproofing or concrete cancer repairs, which can be a curse. You can find out more by going to networkconstructionservices.com.au or, better still, you can talk to Steve on the telephone if you want to. 98085673. Got it? 98. 98- Zero eight five six seven three. Listen to Two SM online. Two SM Supernetwork dot com. More of High Tide on Two SM and the Super Network. Thanks to Shimano. Tomorrow's tackle today. If only I could go. Fishing down Welcome the back to High Tide. Time to go up and catch up with the Tuna King. Boy, oh boy, Renegade Blue Water Charters had a week. Bradley, g'day, how are you? Good, thank you, Grant. How are you? Oh, mate, watching a guy, a photo of a guy on your boat, uh, probably, I, I'm guessing he'd be in his uh, 50s, no disrespect intended if I'm wrong, trying to pick up a tuna that he just cannot pick up. It's just <laughs> too bloody heavy for him. Tell us all about it. We had some first world problems there. We did. We sort of um, lots of tuna action and, yeah, lots of action and, yeah, lots of happy snaps and, yeah, they're a little bit big to handle. I were to pick up and put in the esky and take a photo with. They were by yourself. Whereabouts were you fishing for those? Uh, straight out off Swansea, a little bit south off Catherine Hill Bay, just over the edge of the continental shelf. It was, yeah, it was great fishing it was, that's for sure, during the week there. So you brought in a ton of them too, didn't you? Yes, yes, we, everybody caught one, that's for sure. And, and, what, and what sort of rigs were you using out there, for, to just to give people a bit of a heads up? Uh, we were just trolling like skirted lures, smaller ones like marlin fishing lures with 24 kilo fishing line. And yeah, it's basically small marlin, like striped marlin fishing gear it was. It also, peeps, if you do go and have a look at his uh, Facebook page, the Renegade Blue Water Charters Facebook page, there's a photo of him piloting uh, the charter boat out uh, through the bridge, which is done of a night, which looks absolutely awesome. What else has been happening around your – oh, 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 have they started digging holes in the water yet? Yes, they have. I was, <laughs> I was, Tuesday was a good day there. They did actually start the channel dredging. So everybody, if you're out in that area, be aware there are there is dredging equipment about and uh, you need to – uh, take care when navigating around that. So, where are the fish been biting in uh, Lake Macquarie, and what what can you recommend? Uh, in the channel, the blackfish have been uh, they've been quite good. The old Ludrick fishermen there with the cabbage just drifting along the um, rock walls. The salmon and tail have been in the lake and in the channel, and there's a few brim around at the moment as well. And the, there's been a lot of fish hanging around the bait schools around the tailor. You know, the schools and that, like uh, Flathead and Brim around them as well, there has been lately. And they're typically down the um, western to the southern end of the lake at the moment. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, it's been really good like that in the lake. But this, this weekend will be a great weekend. You've got a good moon and tide at the moment. So, so yeah. what, what time would you recommend people go and have a, a bit of an attack? Uh, yeah, it's the, it's the dawn and dusk. And into the evening, but if you're going to use lures, you'd be just first thing in the morning and just look for the tailor schools and just fish underneath the tailor schools. Even if the even if the tailor have moved on, you just hang around there where they were working for another 15, 20 minutes and see what's around and then just keep moving after that. There's a lot of water in that Lake Macquarie. I'm just looking at it on a, on a map at the moment. There's there's so many areas for fish to congregate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. This time of year, the water's a little bit warmer down the south end of the lake, so, you know, they'll be tending to congregate down there a little bit more, I think, from my experience. What, Taylor's Bayside or? Beg your pardon? Down around Taylor's Bayside? Yeah, 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 absolutely, yep. Yep, yeah, no, that's a, that's a good spot there. And around Poor Bar Island is another great spot. There's a lot of areas around there that sort of, fish very well that's for sure it's nice deep water around there too i'm just noticing and uh on navionics they've got quite a few uh 
GPS marks for uh, <laughs> so if you if you've got Navionics and the I think you have to have premium for that, but if you've got it, um, somebody's very kindly put in some really red hot spots. Uh, to go, actually, that's just red spots everywhere in Lake Macquarie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of good spots there, that's for sure. Yeah. Are these your markers, Brad? <laughs> I don't think they are, but uh, some of them I'll probably horn a few times, that's for sure. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks so much for your time. If people want to get in contact with you, how do they go about it? Uh, just give us a buzz, uh, 0437 or just flick us a message on facebook or instagram off our sites on there thank you bradley much appreciated and just do keep in the back of your mind too if you're thinking of heading out today the winds are going to be up and the seas are going to be up so you may want to do that with a great deal of caution we're going to take a quick break when we come back we're going to head down south and catch up with ross o'brien gary stewart weeknights from 8 p.m don't make a statement unless you have all the facts i'm up to the average of the land in Australia. Yeah. I don't know where they get their information from is what really is disturbing. Talk tonight has Sydney talking. Wind turbines. Mm-hmm. They say oh, they kill birds and whatever, but the bloody things go real slow. How do they kill birds? I don't know. There's a lot of misconceptions about everything lately. Uh, yeah, there is. Gary Stewart's weeknights from 8. A few weeks ago, I heard someone talking about this terrible racist country, Australia. We certainly are a multinational, multicultural, but there is racism here, though. You've got to admit, there's still racism in the country. Kids calling me a pommy wog and spitting on me and kicking oh, me. It was awful. That's completely other. But that's what they did to the kids. That was the initiation. Gary Stewart, weeknights from 8 p.m. Light Centre, Night Centre, See the Starry Light Centre, Cruise Centre, Tours Centre, Are You Insured Centre, Stay Young, Have Some Fun, Follow the Sun, Take the Plunge, Easy Done Centre, Island Top, Over the Top, One Stop Shop, Never Stop, Your Centre, Our Centre, Flight Centre, At the Centre for 40 Years. Light Centre. After the big game, every sports fan deserves to kick back and relax. And what better way to do that than with a mattress from OMF? Get ready to unwind in style with the ultimate in comfort and relaxation. So, what are you waiting for? Head on over to OMF and check out their game-changing range of mattresses. Shop online or at over 50 locations nationwide, 100% Australian designed and owned. Where comfort meets sport. Sustained performance in league is more than just one great game. It's about playing consistently game after game, season after season. Host Plus has delivered strong performance over the long term with top returns over 20 years. A top performing super fund over the long term, that's a plus. Issued by Host Plus PTY Limited. Super ratings SR50 balance index January 2023. General advice only. Consider the relevant Host Plus PDSMT and D at hostplus.com.au. Past performance is not a reliable indicator of future performance. Search compare Host Plus today. Coming home. Hi, Mark Taylor here. This year I'm celebrating 25 years with Fujitsu. Get a digital prepaid MasterCard worth up to $450 with any eligible Fujitsu air conditioner. Plus, go in a draw to win a share of $250,000. Come home to Fujitsu Comfort. It's Australia's favourite air. Purchase eligible model by 31st July 23. Claim by 29 September 23. Retain receipts. Permits New South Wales TP02527 ACT TP 230451 SAT 23327. T's and C's and exclusions apply. See website. This is 2SM Sydney. More of High Tide on 2SM and the Super Network. Thanks to Shimano. Tomorrow's tackle today. 29 minutes after four. We're about to head down the coast and chat with Ross O'Brien. It's going to be interesting this morning, Kieran, because down there, at the moment, it's gusting 30, and that's on the coast. He wouldn't know about it. He'd still be locked up inside. With the the fire will have gone to the front door and come back to report to him. But let me tell you, at low tide was at 3.57 this morning at Fort Denison. Yeah. And that was under 0.4 of a metre, 0.38 to be precise, Mr. Blake. <laughs> High tide will be at 10.01 and it'll be 1.4 of a metre and another low at 15.45. That's 3.45 for those who can't work it out. And that'll be a half a metre. 
And if you're up and about late tonight at 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock, it'll be 1.64 as a high tide. Can you hear the crackling? Yes. That, that sounds like the fireplace in the background for Ross O'Brien. Is. Good morning, sir. How are you? You're spot on, uh, Karen. <laughs> I just, just put two big pieces in there, mate, to keep it warm for Mother when she gets up. Uh, See, you, what people don't understand is, Ross, you've been so well educated and, and you're so kind to your... Uh, well, how many wives? Five or six before you learn to get it right, but you've got it yeah, right now. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, well, that's that's why I, I haven't got a butler. If I hadn't been married so many times, I'd been able to afford a butler to look after a wife. <laughs> you and I both. Yeah, yeah. No, it's um, it is a bit windy. It's not windy on the hill here this morning, but uh, yesterday we copped it. I tell you, it was unbelievable. Yeah, we were um, the same. Yeah, it really got got savage. I haven't seen the. I didn't look at it what it was, but it was well over 35, 40. So, so we got that sa- gale situation. So we got that southwester coming across behind you there. Yep. So well, quickly, quickly, we, I'm just thinking we could fish down there on the base. Did you get any precipitation during the week, a couple of days? Uh, yeah, two days. One, one heavy night and one. Like sprinkly sort of day. So but discoloration. Night, the hiding. So we got Sorry, some mate? discoloration coming out of the drains. I didn't see any there yesterday, mate. So the water, the water still looked quite good actually. Mm. But um, the news is, if you want to catch a jewfish, get up on the lake. That's okay. The lake. Oh, what are they? We're not allowed to call them that. What do we got to call them? I don't know. I call I them jewies. Yeah, yeah. What are they called? Well, Oh, no. It's that long since a... <laughs> I haven't had a fisheries book in my hand since the 90s. It's so a shoemaker yeah. used to make me have a... He'd say things, I had to look it up to see whether he was right or wrong. But, um, yeah. Well, what you do... You, you know, Peter Johnson there. be saying, you bloody idiots. Yeah, well, that's poor old Pete. <laughs> well, it's his okay. say he's old. That, that, <laughs> yeah. He's a young fella compared to us. Anyway, very much so. Yeah, no, Mull- Mullaway, by the way, Mull- it is Mullaway. Mullaway, that's the one. Ring. Good on you, son. Well done. Yep. The uh, mullet. They were using mullet for bait, mate. So they were getting mullet down under the bridge. Apparently, there was a few come up from under the bridge, but they're all the way in the lake. They're all the way up to the power station, so. It's if, worth a trip on the lake if you're after Jewish. Um, if, you, if you could, I'll just interrupt there for a second, Ross. If you could see my a piece of paper I've got in front of me, yeah. and where I've got Kiama, Ross O'Brien, coming down, the weather, yeah. crap, outside fishing during, later next week, the beaches, yeah. look at the farm, Bombo or Gerangong, the rocks, yeah. maybe look at the pool in the harbour, the gantry. Or the drains, but the drains are out because I thought there would be discoloration. Nah, Minamara. No, what about the entrance or that island just yeah. off Minamara? Minamara, the Stack Island there. Yeah, maybe around there for sure. There's been some nice uh, snapper pulled up from there during the week too. The guys that did get out, right. um, they've done all right with it, mate. They, as I said, no one was out yesterday. It was just too bad, but. Um, during the week, they got some nice uh, snapper at the entrance and around the front of the island, um, which isn't a good place to be when it's blowing southwest. Um, yeah. But you know, life's like that. You got to take the good with the bad, haven't you? Southwest, southeast, not good there. Um, so yeah, it's just about everywhere they're getting good fish, mate. But um, I just got excited about the two fish or the. Mulleray, what did they call them? Mulleray. Mulleray. Um, yeah, I got just to be excited about the Mulleray because uh, it's good to see big fish like that getting into the lake, mate. It just shows you the lake's uh, nice and, um, uh, what's the word, clean and tidy. Although the Mulleray uh, don't care too much about clean water, but they like clean baits. So 
they've been mm. chasing them up the river, taking them up, right up to the... And while I've got you online there, what about yeah. out the front of the lake around swinging up there a bit north to the Five Islands? Yeah, that would work. Um, what wind was it today again? The, you know, the, well, we're looking at... After the, lunch. After lunch. Uh, oh, that's... Good. Off, offshore. <clears throat> offshore, yeah. we're looking at uh, around about 30 knots. Okay. Okay, well, um, that that would make it a bit fluffy inside. Yeah. Um, just have a good look at it this afternoon before you get on. Um, although they've got the wind during the morning. We haven't got a breath of wind up here. Um, what have I got in the harbour? Uh, Koyama. 14 knots, gust 9 knots. So, from the west. So, that won't be too bad, mate. That'll, that'll make uh, getting into the island quite easy, mate. Getting into uh, Bombay. Well, Bombay's a bit open to the west. You might have a few problems there. Uh, the harbour will be all right on the gantry. It's, it's even protected. From the western shore, you, yep. you can sit on the uh, wall there, no problem. That's good for the little fellas, and they could hook up a uh, nice uh, flathead down there at the moment too. Um, you know, you've got to watch Steve, mate. When he throws out all his old fish that he can't sell anymore, um, he throws them in into uh, you know, and um, they uh, they get attacked. Around the boats, so it's worth uh, worth having a look there. That's another thing. Way worse kind of work. You always buy a snapper or a mow away off steam, hey, and then take it home and be the hero and tell them where you got it. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> I didn't have to do it. I need to do it now. But uh, yeah, so it's, it's going to be a good day down there, mate. Going on this forecast, but they are. Saying 30 knots during the morning, yeah, and again in the evening. So when the when the sun does come up, have a bit of a look at it. Uh, 30 knots is a bit heavy, uh, but you can get out of it. You can get out of it along the front of the um, uh, along the front of the uh, rock, the, all the rock formation from Kiama right down out the front, right down to. Uh, Seringong. Right. Uh, and that, that that's another spot you can fish in the westerly. The 90 mile beach is a bit heavy in the westerly. Yeah, um, <coughs> hey, Ross, you know. should get a bit of white water down at the corners of the beaches. Oh, yeah, you, in the corner, yeah, you'd work all right. Um, the farm would be good in the westerly. Mm. It's a good spot at the farm. Um, it, it's... There's areas there where you can and you can't fish. The uh, northern side of, of uh, Bass Point would be all right, mate. Um, right down to the gantry. The gantry's open again there, but you, if you're fishing off the uh, off the land, you've got a chance. Uh, it'll just run your lines out a bit. Um, yeah, so there's a few spots around the west. We just be aware of it because if you do go out in your boat it can come up real quick um, yeah. and uh, it'll scare you you know what I mean alright bro uh, oh yeah a couple of the boys that used to fish with me regular about four of them used to come down all the time two are from Sydney and two are local they were trying to organise uh, charter for them to go on so I'm looking forward to that when it happens yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, they're trying to organise one. I've got to get one where I can get on or not. But, uh, yeah, the, the boy said, worse come to worse, I'm that light now. I'll, I'll, I'll give the states a ring and see what the Queen Mary's doing for you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the one I said when it's got over the toilet, the shower. Uh, Hot and cold and running so, blondes. And a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Roscoe, thanks for your time this morning. We'll catch up with you tomorrow. Yeah, I should have a bit more tomorrow. I'll, uh, I'll go and see who went out there uh, this morning. I'll go and see who's out. You're a legend. I know they're the ring, man. All right, guys. Thank you. See you, bro. Have a great day. Back okay. to the fire. Okay. Back to the fire. <laughs> Spoiled. Spoiled, he is. Spoiled. Speaking of things of such, let's continue with our fish reports. Good morning, Bobby Dean. How are you? 
How are you, gentlemen? Not too bad. Still got hair left after that wind yesterday. It it blew a. Ga- what, what did you rate it rate it as? How 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 big did you think the oh, hair gust the thirty knots? Okay, but yeah, you know, pretty constant twenty, but gust the thirty. Yeah, maybe more. But, uh, you know. Yeah, that's what I had of that too. But uh, apparently the uh, the wind stick read differently. But and, and the only reason I'm not having a dig at the BOM, I actually. You know, they're trying to predict the weather, and I think that's a really difficult thing to do because there's so many variables that come into it. I'm not a BOM kicker. However, I just want people to be aware if they're saying it's going to be 25, 30, it could be well above that. So if you're very close to nearly double that, yeah, so just be careful, you know, just be careful. That's my point. Yeah, well, Sometimes it pays to put your head out the window. Way. Sorry, say again, Bobby. They, they, they say, you know, allow any up to about 40% either way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, you know, that's one of those things. It's tackle shop weather, mate. But unfortunately, it's never 40% in the in the lighter direction. It's always 40% in the other direction. That's the, that's the drama. I went on going out the other week and he canned it because of the wind forecast. Yeah. And never got over five knots. Yeah. It was like the day we bought the bluebird up. It was like the day we bought the bluebird up from Sydney Harbour. It was supposed to be fifteen to eighteen all day coming in from the west. I don't think it came in from the west at once. And if we had seven knots up until the afternoon when it kicked in, uh, if we had seven knots, it was it was a good gust. You know? Yeah, well, I do well. believe that that forty percent was once introduced many many years ago in relation to insurance. Yeah, it's just a liability thing. That's all. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's only a guess, mate. Yeah. But, you know, like, where they put their um, meters and, like, you know, they could be shadowed from hills and all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and at, the, at the end of the day, you're trying to predict Mother Nature, so you, you're never going to get it 100% right. I actually think they do a pretty good job, to be honest with you, because I get the hour-by-hour breakdowns from the BOM, and yeah. I find them very, very accurate, to be honest. Yeah, well, that's like the Blakey uses too for flying. Yeah. You know, that is spot on. But anyway, you know, Roscoe talking about those Mulloway and the lake down there is pretty much spot on. I've heard the same for the last few weeks. Yeah. Also the Shoal Haven. Uh, he's been fishing pretty good for Mulloway too. Mate son was going down there last night. It'd be very interesting to see how they went. Uh, a lot of them fish down around where the punt is. Yeah. But, um, no, uh, you know, those yellow things, like your mate from off at Lake Macquarie, mate, they're up and down the coast. Yes. It's um, been an exceptional year for yellow fin, and, you know. It, they've been here for four or six weeks. They've just been here for month after month. The, the, the vibe I'm sort of getting, and, and, I, and I'll put it that way, and you can give your thoughts, Bobby, is that... Um, you've got to be very specific on where you go. Once you find them, they're there and they're there in numbers, but they can be a bit elusive. You can't just basically go, you know, out to 40 or 50 and just hope for the best. You've got to be right on the right on the, the part of the shelf where they are. Oh, well, it's the old saying, mate, fish are where you find them. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, like we, one of our mates... Um, here on, on Ambition Carters, yeah, he's, he gets them one day and not the next. Yeah. And he's a very experienced skipper. Ivan Bennett, he's, he's a top, he's been chartering for years, you know. Um, so it's one of those things. But, you know, there's a few fish around. There's still a lot of mullet um, runneries around. But Mulloway, in the Georgia system, they're right up in the inner tip of Norton Lake and further up. Yeah. Up towards Cabinata Creek. Um, which is pretty typical winter time. Yeah. But, you know, <coughs> the beach is a lot harder to fish this time of year. Those wessies are flat and fried off, and you tend to get a hell of a lot of rays of various types. Um, like you were talking earlier about a bit of white water. That's about the only place you might catch a few tailors and stuff like that. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, that's where they will congregate. That's where bait will go in the shelter. Um, 
It's just one of those things. Yeah. But now I was chatting to my nephew, Phil, yesterday, and he said once this wind drops off, Lake Wallace should fish extremely well. Buddy, we've got to leave it there and head off to a commercial break. We'll uh, catch up with you tomorrow. Certainly will, mate. 2SM has Sydney talking. Wake up with Richard King. In your opinion, big business with price gouging is responsible for the inflation we're experiencing at the moment, Kevin. If all those people were just a little bit less greedy, how much better off would we be? Then from 9am, the king of talkback radio, John Lloyd. I think you're an idiot. You're a stubborn fool. Right, <laughs> oh, no. OK. I just thought I'd give you something to think about. OK, well, it has. It's uh, got me thinking about stubborn fools that make stupid statements, and you're one of them. Afternoons with Brent Bolsitude. What he needs to do, though, I believe, as the Prime Minister, is own up and say, look, I can't deliver on this promise. Talking sports. Weekdays from three. Happy. I oh, know, I'm just saying. We're not talking about a pup here. He's been around for donkeys. Talk tonight. With Gary Stewart. They've been screaming out for help here. State government's not listening. Neither is the local council. 2SM has Sydney talking. G'day, Merv Hughes here. New Farm's been there for Aussie growers for 100 years. Through prosperity and heartache, drought and flame. Through the unprecedented and through innovation. New Farm's high quality crop protection products are formulated right here in Australia. Because Aussie growers are tougher together through choosing Australian. New Farm understands local conditions and the importance for Aussie growers to have the right products at the right time. New Farm, Australian through and through. To learn more, visit newfarm.com.au. Looking for innovative appliances designed with the environment in mind? Then look no further. For over 110 years, Whirlpool has been a leader in kitchen and laundry appliances. Using patented Sixth Sense technology, Whirlpool guarantees outstanding results while saving precious time and energy. Watching the footy feel like a hot pie at halftime? The Whirlpool Crisp and Grill Microwave will cook you a perfectly crisp pie in only eight minutes, just in time for kickoff. So, have you got a Whirlpool? Visit whirlpool.com.au. Recently retired and want to give back to the community? Looking to contribute to a worthwhile cause? Join View Clubs of Australia, a friendly women's network in your local community. View supports the Smith family to help Australian children in need break the cycle of poverty. Become a member today. Call 1800 805 366 or go to view.org.au. If you want to learn how to light up your career in an electrical trade or organise the office in admin, MEGT can connect you with thousands of employers Australia-wide. Earn while you learn with the number one experts in apprenticeship and traineeships. With a dedicated accounts team in every state, MEGT supports you from start to finish. Find your me with MEGT and visit megt.com.au forward slash jobs. 2SM has Sydney talking. Right time to head down the south coast and find out how fishing's been going down there. And brought to us by Pro Lure Australia is Greg Reed. G'day, Greg. How are you today? Very good morning. Not bad. How are you guys? Not too bad. Not too bad. Keeping out of trouble. Blakey's away, so that's good news for us. We we won't have the the uh, professor breathing down our, our necks every time we make a mistake, and I'm trying to keep Kieran under control, so that's a full-time job as well. How's, you, how's your work You write been? a book on it. <laughs> yeah, week, week's been pretty good. A bit windy yesterday, but um, that should back off a little bit now. Um, yeah, yeah but, and morning tides may be a bit of a snapper day today, but um, yeah, week's, week's been okay. We're getting sort of mixed reports up and down the coast uh, this oh, morning yeah, it's too. August, mate. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, depending on where you are, if you're in the, it's it's a funny thing. If you're in the right depth and you're in the right water temperature and everything, all the boxes are ticked. They're coming up left, right, and centre. But finding those locations appears to be the uh, fun part. Yeah, yeah. Like, and if we start offshore, it's a bit of a mixed bag off there too, because there is a finger of warm water sort of, you know, licking the coast at the moment. So the water is actually very patchy, and the fish can either like that or not. Uh, snapper probably tend to prefer the, the, the cooler water and with the westerlies that we've had yesterday and well, strong westerlies yesterday and then and then continuing west northwest today, you know, the 30 metre mark out the front of Jervis Bay along the sand line, somewhere on your favourite point for a feeder snapper is probably one of the best um, best options that and the feeder squid. 
Um, it'd be a bit windy inside the bay, particularly over towards the um, eastern side. That's the side away from all the villages um, with the westerlies blowing. But, um, yeah, haven't had any reports really from JB. Um, it's pretty quiet this time of year. Like, like things, this is, this is, we're in the toughest phase of the whole sort of piscatorial calendar at the moment. Um, August particularly, I just, I don't bother fishing it. I've probably said this a couple of times over the few, last few months, but I don't bother fishing it in August. It's just too hard. And it's really interesting because the basin goes dormant for the majority of species inside the basin. Yeah. Um, once you get into the Sussex Inlet River, the river actually leading out to sea, that can be different because that can actually be a couple of degrees warmer uh, where you get a bit of a, a more of an influence from the ocean and some of the ocean water at the moment is, you know, 19, um, even patches at 20 if you get the right patch. But um, there's plenty of ludry, plenty of blackfish and, and brim and trevally in the channel. Um, if you're fishing really light, but the basin itself is just, it's a bit of misery this time of year. Like it's we, another couple of weeks, you know, we get a few warm days after this cold spell. Prawns come out of the mud early September, then it's um, then it's game on. And and that's the basin. But if you go a little bit further south, there's systems further south of us from here in, in, in between here and Batemans Bay where fishing in the estuaries is actually really good. So to be honest, I've never been able to work that out. Um, it's it's got something to do with obviously I think the water exchange like the water doesn't exchange much in the basin it's more of a, a diurnal system where the tide goes out for a couple of weeks on the dark and then it comes in for a couple of weeks on the full moon um, that's obviously got some sort of impact on it but a lot of the smaller systems further south that have better exchange of water and actual actually regular tidal flows because the main body of the creek or or the, it's just a creek itself where it's really close to the ocean and you've got a better exchange of water. Those systems tend to fish, um, tend to fish a bit better. And there's been some, there's some really good brim lakes south of us here, which are you know well documented. If you kind of, if you're in that space without me, I haven't mentioned too many of them because I'll get crucified by all the crew down. <laughs> <laughs> well, having grown up on Swan Lake, I can tell you there's not much in there. <laughs> that's about the only tip no, I well, can so give. That, that is just a myth. Swan Lake is an epic little fishery. Yeah, yeah. Well, are, they, are they stocked fish? Because I, the, no, I last time no, I was there, all, most people, most people just don't know how to fish, Grant. Most people still haven't got their head around three and four pound braid and three and four pound leader. Particularly, you need three pound leader sometimes in winter, let alone four pound. And most people are still, you know, they just got the the Kmart combination out from, from Grandad's shed and they're chucking out 10, 15 pound line with a pattern Oster rig on it and a double hook rig in an estuary and wondering why they don't catch anything. That's um, me. Yeah, yeah. That's why you're not catching anything. <laughs> so Swan Lake particularly, yes, it is netted, but the netting in there is, I think, oh, I forget, I forget what the tonnage is. It's not enough to affect it. There's a resident population in there, black brim in particular, Oh. Um, mix, mix of both black and yellow, and it's been open to the um, entrance a number of times this year. But if we if you can get a few months where the lake's closed, the water level comes up, it fills in the timber around the edges. A lot of the black brim will come out of the creeks, mooch around in the ma- main part of the lake, and it's it's just such a, a fantastic little uh, fishery that we've got on our doorstep that everyone complains about. And yet, particularly once it gets warmer in the spring, you can go in there and have fifty, sixty fish sessions, no problem at all. But You've just got to, and lure fishing is, it's one of those systems where lure fishing is much better because you have to continue to move just to find the fish because they move around the lake. Yeah. Um, but basically all you need is just an electric motor, a little boat or a kayak, um, three, four pound braid, four pound leader, a little, little pro lure S36 crankbait or an ST72 um, shallow or deep diving minnow, chuck it into the timber up against the bank and then slowly twitch that lure out and put a pause into it and you'll be surprised how your whole world changes. Oh, cool. Well, I I haven't been there since I was a kid, but I remember back in those days, I don't ever think um, I was ever down there when the the lake was open. It was always closed off because I'd go... And that's the best time. Yeah. I'd go surfing on the beach. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but like these lakes down here, like Lake Conjola, everyone complains about that. Lake and go, oh, shut the fish is no good. No, you don't know how to fish. With all due, with all due respect, most people just haven't got their head around the light tackle estuary game in terms of lure fishing in particular. Which is, you think about it, when these lakes are shut, there's actually more competition for food. Yeah. So if you can actually locate where the, the uh, a good school is, 
around the edges and you put an offering in front of them, they're actually a, an, a really lightly presented, realistic offering. Um, the fish are actually more inclined to eat. And I prefer to fish the eye coals down here a lot of the time when they're closed because that's when there's higher competition for food and the fish are more inclined to eat. So um, Lake Conjola particularly is a good fishery in winter. Um, and there's a few other systems. Like I was up a system last weekend with my son and we came across the carcass of, you know, I'd say the fish was around about 10 to 15 kilo dewy that had been eaten by a seal and it was in the brackish water. Um, we were catching salmon on top water, just flicking little prawns into snags and then having these Australian salmon come up like where, where they shouldn't be. shouldn't be in brackish water on a snag yeah. kilometres from kilometers from the coast. But um, So who really knows? So, yeah, estuary side of things, give the basin a miss till early September um, or, or prove me wrong. I'd love to be proved wrong. I used to fish it in August, and I go, "Why the bloody hell did I fish it?" <laughs> what for punishment? And then, yeah, and then I go back. I go, "No, I'm going to prove it wrong this year." No, I didn't. You didn't prove it wrong again, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like, I'd like to. And reports locally, yeah, the last couple of weeks, there's nothing much has changed. So the water's still pretty cold, and it's crystal clear in most places. Although we did have a good drop of rain on Thursday night, so that'll actually, um, that'll help it. But um, in the meantime, some of those bigger swam, uh, bigger swimming, bigger. Salmon from the far south coast uh, appear to have sort of swum north of Baton's Bay. So there's a better size class of Australian salmon on the beaches, um, along along with um, some good tailor, um, and also around the rocky headlands as well. Um, so, yeah, I don't have any reports of uh, tuna at the moment. You probably do better than me and keep your ear to the ground with that. Um, I've been a bit off the pace with that this week. But... Um, Ocean temp's really nice. You'll have a little south swell this weekend, um, enough to sort of keep your eye on the ledges if you if you're contemplating, you know, you know, hitting the ledges for drummer or um, or all the uh, rock sort of species. Um, so yeah, keep your eye on that south swell. But um, yeah, all in all, light westerly, bit of sunshine, and um, things will be warming up in the next couple of weeks. Sounds perfect, mate. I'll look forward to uh, you having a big, big spring and summer. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Happy days. All the best to you. And don't forget, he has brought you with the good wishes of ProLawAustralia.com.au. Go check out the website for more information.